Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. September records unprecedented tourism figures with more than 21,000 stay over visitors. A major initiative aimed at improving cardiovascular health in St. Lucia is launched. The Department of Human Services celebrates St. Lucia's centenarians and the NTN Nouvelle are Creole. St. Lucia's tourism sector has recorded another major feat. Already basking in seven record-breaking months of increases for 2019, the month of September has proven unprecedented for visitor arrivals to the island, specifically stay-over arrivals. Figures indicate that St. Lucia received 21,608 stay-over visitors for the month of September, a 15% increase from last September and the largest percentage increase for the year. This figure also surpassed the record set in 2017, 20,049, by more than 1,000 additional visitors, or 7.8%, in the aftermath of Hurricanes Irma and Maria that severely affected several other Caribbean islands that month. Most of this growth was driven by the 15% increase in arrivals from the U.S. market, an additional 1,156 visitors, despite there being no major difference in airlift from that market. The second largest real growth, 1,144 additional visitors, was seen in the Caribbean market, which grew by 25%, owing in large measure to the hosting of CPL cricket endorsed under the Caribcation banner. All other markets except the UK and other parts of Europe increased by double digits in September, with France and Canada in the lead, with 52% and 43% increases respectively. In more tourism-related news, the World Cruising Club is preparing to host the 30th edition of the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers, the ARC, to St. Lucia. This year, organizers are ramping up activities commemorating this milestone, including a youth component. Anissa Antoine has details. Every year, the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers attracts over 200 boats and 1,200 people who sail across the Atlantic from Gran Canaria to St. Lucia. The World Cruising Club, WCC, has officially announced the 2019 ARC Youth Team. Of the 12 young people participating in the ARC, six of them are St. Lucian natives. Anthony Burgas, chairman of the ARC Planning Committee, explained that the ARC Youth Team has been conceived in commemoration of the 30th edition of the ARC and St. Lucia's 40th independence anniversary. World Cruising Club have created a unique opportunity that celebrates both the history and the future of the connection between the Ark and St. Lucia, and also brings the St. Lucian youth and the local maritime industries to the forefront. In essence, the Ark youth team will place 12 young people together to sail across the Atlantic Ocean with the Ark this year. But it's not just any 12 young people. The Ark youth team is made up of six young people from St. Lucia, Four from Gran Canaria, where the ARC starts each year, and two from the United Kingdom. The ARC youth team will sail west across 2,700 nautical miles on a 72 still Challenger sailing yacht named Challenger 1. This journey across the Atlantic Ocean will be an amazing adventure for our young participants, and I'm sure they'll remember it for the rest of their lives. It will undoubtedly be hard work but at the same time challenging, spectacular, educational, rewarding, confidence building and a solid lesson in team building. ARC Youth Team member Chris Anki Flood expressed gratitude to the WCC for granting him the opportunity to be a part of the ARC. When I got into sailing, I was hearing about the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers where every year during December time you have thousands of hundreds of boats crossed in the Atlantic. And I sat down and I said, well, one of those days I might get a chance if I keep my head the right way, going the right path, to get the chance to cross the Atlantic. And here I am today, thankful for the opportunity for um, going across. Um, if I'm nervous, yes, I am. <laughs> right? I've never been so nervous in my life before. <laughs> but I've been training from, well, not training, but going out Monday to Friday at the resort sailing out in the Atlantic for an hour with staff and guests, and this is my practice until I leave. 
The Arc Youth team is scheduled to leave Las Palmas de Gran Canaria on Sunday, November 24, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. The Department of Health and Wellness, in collaboration with the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, recently launched the HOTS initiative aimed at improving the cardiovascular health of the St. Lucia population. More in this report from Fennel Neptune. The HOTS initiative is aimed at improving the prevention and control of cardiovascular diseases in St. Lucia. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Merlin Fredericks James says she is very pleased that St. Lucia is the first OECS country to implement the HOTS initiative, which will assist with better blood pressure control among St. Lucians. The HOTS initiative will require the active participation of persons who have hypertension, as well as all healthcare workers, particularly healthcare workers in the primary care settings, such as the wellness centers, district hospitals, the general practitioners within the private sector, and others. The goal is to ensure that persons with hypertension achieve very good control of their blood pressure so that they avoid the complications of high blood pressure. Permanent Secretary in the Department of Health and Wellness, Felix Sentel, says this initiative is extremely important as it will improve cardiovascular health in St. Lucia. In embracing the HATS initiative, we are aware that much work needs to be done to ensure that behavioral change is paramount. The HATS modules allow for straightforward information and simple methods which will provide clear guidance to the healthcare staff. These modules undoubtedly will help tremendously with patient education, counseling, and management. And we are anxious to assess the changes in behavior, body mass index, blood pressures, blood sugar levels, and cholesterol levels in clients over the next few months. PAHO advisor for chronic diseases, Patrice Lawrence Williams, called on stakeholders, healthcare workers, policymakers, and patients to play a significant part to ensure better blood pressure outcomes. The implementation of the HARDS technical package is therefore very cost effective. Our economies can no longer sustain the cost of care associated with the management of cardiovascular diseases at the secondary and the tertiary levels. The HARDS package utilizes highly efficacious and accessible antihypertensives at affordable prices designed to improve medication compliance, minimize specialist care, and maximize the affordable cost of primary or preventative health care. The HARDS initiative will commence in six wellness centers, Grenivier, La Croix, Ciceron, Babono, Richefort, and Bellevue Wellness Centers. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. The Department of Health and Wellness has received reports of cases of hand, foot and mouth disease at some schools on island. Hand, foot and mouth disease is a contagious viral illness. It is common in infants and children younger than five years old and spreads easily in childcare settings because of frequent diaper changes and because young children often put their hands in their mouths. However, older children and adults can also get the illness. Dr. Michel Francois is the national epidemiologist in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Hand, foot and mouth disease is a viral infection. It is contagious. It usually occurs in children five years of age and under. However, adults and older children can get hand, foot and mouth disease. Most persons presenting with hand, foot and mouth disease would present initially with a fever, which would later accompany, be accompanied by lesions in the mouth, on the soles of the feet, on the palms of the hands, and it can also occur on the knees and the elbows, the buttocks and the genital area. There is no specific treatment for hand, foot and mouth disease. However, fever reducing medication and painkillers can be used as persons presenting with hand, foot and mouth disease may have pain in the mouth. In such instances, parents and guardians are urged to monitor their children as they may refuse eating 
cool and or cold drinks can be administered to soothe pain. Hot, hard, crunchy and acidic food should be avoided. Persons may not always present all of the symptoms and some people may not show symptoms at all, but they can still pass the virus to others. Hand hygiene is also very important in reducing transmission. Hand, foot and mouth disease is transmitted mainly from person to person contact when individuals get into contact with the secretions from the lesions as well as if they are in contact with contaminated surfaces or if an infected individual coughs and sneezes. Therefore, persons presenting with hand, foot and mouth disease, it is advised to refrain from going into work or to school as this can further um, spread the, the, the disease to other individuals. If you are unsure about your child's condition or if you notice that signs and symptoms do not improve, we recommend that individuals please go into your nearest wellness facility where you can receive advice and treatment from one of our practitioners. Hand, foot and mouth disease is usually not a serious disease and most persons recover in 7 to 10 days without medical treatment. The following measures can be used to reduce the spread of hand, foot and mouth disease. Frequent hand washing, often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, especially after changing diapers. Avoid touching your nose, eyes and mouth with unwashed hands. Avoid close contact and sharing cups and eating utensils with infected persons. Disinfect frequently touch surfaces and objects such as toys and doorknobs, especially if someone is sick. Avoid going to work or school until fever is gone and mouth sores have healed. The Department of Health and Wellness urges persons to visit their nearest wellness center for medical attention. And this is the NTN Nightly. Do stay with us. When a hurricane is approaching, safety of life and the preservation of livelihoods is most important. We should take heed. Create proper drainage along the contour of your farm. Harvest and store all crops that could be harvested. And if possible to sell any produce, do so. Reinforce farmhouses by using screws or hurricane ties to secure the roof and ensure that it is boarded up. Remove all plastic covers from greenhouses and store properly in your reinforced farmhouse. Secure all official agriculture and farming business documents and policies in sealed plastic coverings. And perhaps consider taking out a crop insurance policy to secure your agro livelihood. Take all possible precaution ahead of a hurricane or tropical storm. This is the hurricane season and we should be prepared. A message brought to you by the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives. Welcome back. Ryan O'Brien is out on assignment. He will be here Friday with the latest developments in youth and sports. But we feature the young ladies who gave off their best in the Miss Independence Pageant 2019. Here's Marius. As part of the 2019 Independence Celebration, the St. Lucia Independence Committee acknowledged and rewarded the participants who took part in the 2019 Miss Independence St. Lucia Pageant. The prize-giving ceremony was held at the Prime Minister's residence on Wednesday, October 23rd, 2019. I just want to let you know that small opportunities are often the beginning of big enterprises. I know you've had a long wait for us to reward you, for us to recognize you. But as you go on in life, you'll realize sometimes there are obstacles. But what seems to be an obstacle sometimes is an opportunity to, go, to do better. So you had to wait, yes. But it's all worth the wait. Chairperson of the Independence Committee, Rosella King, commended the girls for putting on a spectacular show. The Miss Independence show held this year was the best attended in years and showcased excellence from 10 beautiful and talented ladies from the length and breadth of St. Lucia. Thank you contestants for your participation because without you, we would not have experienced a show of that class, caliber and high standard. Let's have it for our queen. Reporting from the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, I am Chevre Marius.
The Ministry of Commerce, International Trade, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs will be hosting St. Lucia Business Month from November 1st to 30th. This year's theme, All in Our Journey, Our Future, Propelling Growth Through Entrepreneurship, aims to foster and promote an enhanced entrepreneurial culture in St. Lucia. The activities for St. Lucia Business Month will be delivered in partnership with key public and private sector agencies and will include a series of targeted events in the form of panel discussions, workshops, symposiums, consultations and business-to-business -business networking sessions. These activities are intended to highlight entrepreneurship and to promote it as one of the key success drivers for our economy's sustainable growth. As part of activities to commemorate St. Lucia Business Month, a media and a ceremonial launch will be held on Friday, November 1st, 2019 at the National Television Network NTN Studio at Huronar House, Point Serothin at 10 a.m. And Governor General Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack was recently joined by Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney and the Department of Human Services in celebrating St. Lucia's centenarians. More in this report. Général, mais moi, force de vie, quoi, mettez conscience nous. À tous nous qui là, j'étais là, quoi, bah, nous forte. En mettez l'union, en mettez l'or. In adopting social development goals, which seek to realize human rights for all, the Human Services Department hosted an afternoon tea party to celebrate centenarians around the island. The event was held at the Governor General's residence on Saturday, October 26, 2019. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, Velda Joseph, commended the Human Services Department for hosting the ceremony and emphasized the need for more St. Lucians to embrace inclusiveness of the elderly. In St. Lucia, there is no place for negative stereotypes of older persons. The thinking that older persons should remain home, you don't take them out, the place for them is in the home and they should remain indoors, that should not be entertained in our island paradise. Rather, we must look at what we are doing. We must reorganize our community and national planning to ensure that we have adopted a whole of society approach. Again, it speaks to inclusiveness. Everybody is involved. Everybody has a contribution to make. Director of the Human Services Department, Beverly Ann Poyot, expressed the gratitude to the centenarians who attended the event and made it a success. Thank you very much for your time, for being here with us, and for allowing us to celebrate you, to celebrate your accomplishments. In St. Lucia, there is an urgent need to strengthen social protection against the risk associated with aging since our fertility rate has fallen, increasing life expectancy. Reporting from the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, I am Chevray Marius. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle à Coyon. La main propre, c'est chemin bon santé. Il est absolument nécessaire pour laver la main si vous voulez chen bon santé. Quand même, si vous n'avez pas de glossité, vous avez fait ces bagages là. Écoutez. Laver la main souvent et puis vous net avec savon, après condition qui a 6 mains 20 min. Par exemple, on ne peut laver la main après vous changer d'ailleurs pas. C'est vite pour vite. Vous tuez les gens qui blessés et bien malades. Après vous tuez les animaux et après vous entamez les ordres. Et si vous n'avez pas de glo, vous avez vu ça vous avez vu les hand sanitizer et bien alcool pour 30 secondes. Lavez la main souvent. Ça c'est une manière pour empêcher les maladies. Si vous voulez plus d'informations, prenez le bureau d'information santé à numéro 468-5349. Welcome back. We join Prime Minister Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Monsieur, Madame, Département qui n'est responsabilité pour information en gouvernement cette ici, c'est GIS, à ce moment télévision nationale pays à NTN, car vous êtes au Nouvelle en Creole. Vous êtes au Prime Minister Hutchinson. Département des affaires les étrangers. Je fais une présentation en chèque en valeur de 30 000 dollars pour l'organisation police cette ci La présentation, c'est pour supporter la police marine. Ça a été fait par un grand dîner qui était prêt en Martinique 13 décembre l'année passée. Conseil général pour Martinique, Guadeloupe et Cayenne, Joanna Salton, déclaré que ces policiers-là ont joué un rôle qui est très important. 
pour protéger la bonne la mer cette le siècle Martinique. Il a ajouté que nous tous connaissons que l'année en pile trafic côté attique des vols et clotes qui ont entré à ces pays là sans la douane connaître, particulièrement en cette le siècle. Ça dit que le pays cette le siècle c'est le premier qui s'est attique ça là qui entré. Alors, il est nécessaire pour l'année protection en place parce que cette le siècle, même si pas directement, et qu'à protéger Martinique et que les autres pays qui en face à nord. Alors, selon Salto, il est très important pour le département d'assister ces polices marines. Et par conséquent, Martinique aussi a trouvé assistance parce que le gouvernement Martinique comprend l'initiative là et qu'il peut tirer cette liste et puis en pile c'est bon. Ministre des Affaires des étrangères, dans cette liste, on est Sarah Flood Bobray, parler de manière les criminels qui ont servi d'équipement qui est bien avancé et aussi ces terroristes-là. Alors, c'est faux gouvernement pour tirer ces policiers-là et puis équipement qui cette fois primaire. Madame Bobrin déclare que la technologie a avancé rapidement et que ces criminels-là ont pris l'avantage. Mais il veut dire qu'il n'est pas si fait pour le gouvernement seulement faire bataille contre ces malfoutiers qui ont opéré en juin. Deuxième grand chef de police en cette ici, Milton Daisy, vous remercie le département des étrangers pour la contribution à la pour assister la police marine. Il dit qu'il a trouvé une nouvelle là, il était très excité. Il a ajouté que ça a placé ce officier marin à des oppositions qui plus mais pour continuer à faire bataille contre le crime à cela. Place recherche folklore de monseigneur Dr. Patrick Anthony, de célébrer la journée internationale de langage coyol, lundi le 28 octobre, et puis en grande conférence à ce langage là. Depuis l'année 1984, je ne crois pas qu'on a célébré et observé tous les années à Caribla avec l'autre nation de héritage créole. À la terre, ça veut dire. Une observation, ça a fait à Dominique, Guadeloupe, Martinique, Haïti, etc. L'année de l'autre pays, qu'on sait chez les réunions. L'année passée, plusieurs Sétlissiens ont été sablés ensemble pour te réfléchir à ce significat du langage créole pour qu'on a et quantité qui a été qui a fait pour développer et servir le langage là. Le gouverneur général a passé de M. Paulette Luzi parler de ces grandes démarches qui a fait pour pousser le langage là devant en cette ci Il déclare que en l'année 1941, il a tenu deux ateliers régionales qui étaient organisés par Place Recherche Folklore et Fondation Nationale pour le développement de recherche, c'est NRDF. Ces ateliers là ont été assurés le langage et le développement en l'année 1942, il y a un sous-développement créole à Thiers. Avant de l'autre progrès, c'est le développement et la production du dictionnaire créole et créole en présentation budget par le gouverneur général. Il y a des plans pour commencer un programme qui a été dit pour trois années. Ça, c'est en l'année 2020 qui a commencé pour instruire créole pour l'école depuis l'antique école pour en guard. Toi. Mais comme on te promet tout, c'est le boisson de jeunes créoles en vieux fort. C'est une qui te ni plus l'activité avec le caga de créoles qui te a aidé pour cimenter toutes ces communes qui en vieux fort. Créoles, à ce que nous avons les mains pour vivre en vieux fort, on a aussi un bon bolin et dit que. Ça a une cause pour mener cette commune ensemble à vieux fort. Durant la célébration dimanche passé, nous causions avec Mme Bolin, ça c'est le maire, quand ça a été mené à la célébration. C'est passé. Quand on savait là, aujourd'hui c'est journée créole, aujourd'hui c'est journée vieux fort. Quand on savait vieux fort, c'est en place. Vous savez, n'importe ça ouvre, parce que nous prenons l'air. Quand on voit qu'on a vu là, à côté, tous ces, 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 ces véhicules là, capables. So, si vous sortez en Isla, ou ça pas là, si vous sortez en Ouest, vous ne pas en bas. So, depuis 6h30, la terre a ni combien de monde qui vient pour un breakfast? Yo? So, à tout le monde, c'est des gens qui viennent pour un lunch. Mais bah, la porte bien commencé, vous savez. Ou dit ça, c'est un pile de monde, ça va être un pile de monde. Bon, 4 h 4 h 10 vous avez un pile de monde. Il faut aimer, il faut aimer ces journées que vous avez là, parce que vous avez tous ces communes ensemble. 
tout ces communes qui viennent ensemble et que ça est bon, là où il y a des gens, vous savez, là où il y a des gens qui font des agrumes, pas des agrumes, tout le monde qui enjoy quoi yo, yo qui ont misé quoi yo, ça. So nous n'y tout le bagage qui est là, nous n'y avons exhibition, tout, tout ça, vous voulez, nous n'y avons pas. Le ministre des Affaires Culture, on a fait une belle rose, c'est là aussi. Il y a une célébration encore l'occasion pour célébrer tout ça, nous y est, comme c'est le sien, et qu'à façon, nous avons embrassé l'héritage. Croyons nous. Le gage nous, had nous, manger nous, tout le bagage nous, nous avons célébré ça. Et que moi, bien content pour moi, c'est le sien, à embrasser ça. Et que nous avons juste que nous avons continué, comme un pays, manier ça avec tout le monde qui vit ensemble, pour savoir avec, avec l'amitié, yeah, pour y en a l'autre. Bien, à présent, ça nous a fait. À nous, à présent, faire ouais, mon Dieu a fait à te passer en vieux fort. Mais c'est nous, c'est Cyril. Toi, je suis passé, moi, je la place là. Moi, je n'ai pas de gojal. 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 Quand je suis passé, la moi vie est la place là. Là où me dit tourner, non pas bon, me dit doua, matin sa couille, doua. Matin sa couille. Oui, Là où est Fria. Oui, oui, oui. Là où Six là. Oui, oui, oui. Mais c'est le bagaille, moi pas qu'à ouais, c'est. Oui, allons. Tout le monde sait pas qu'à ouais, doua. Même si vous pensez là, sous votre tête, pas qu'à ouais, mais doua, pas qu'à ouais. Pas ça ouais, doua, mais c'est. Pas qu'à ouais, doua, pas qu'à ouais. Même si moi j'ai des doux votes. Pas qu'à ouais, mais doua, pas qu'à ouais. Pas qu'à ouais, doua, pas qu'à ouais. Oh, 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 c'est comme ça a fait à passer un vieux fort pour célébrer ce jeune école 2019. Je remercie autant pour garder et je vais avoir une invitation. Je ne puis encore les gars pour ce Nouvelle à Koyol. Nous avons plus à ce je ne Koyol toujours à dans l'autre um, nouvelle. Et tout le monde autant. Et ça c'est le moins vieux présenté au Michel. Merci on Pearl Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Partly cloudy skies occasionally becoming cloudy with some scattered showers, some of which may be heavy in certain locations and isolated thunderstorms. Residents and motorists in areas prone to flooding and landslides are advised to exercise caution. A tropical wave along with the shear line will continue to cause increased cloudiness, showers and isolated thunderstorms across the Windward Islands during the next 24 hours. A second tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 5.27 p.m. and will be low again at 12.32 a.m. The tide for Vieux Bay was low at 12.28 p.m. and is high at present. The seas moderate to locally rough with waves and northeasterly swells 5 to 8 feet or 1.5 to 2.4 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to rough seas. The sun will rise Friday at 5.58 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.